All right, uh, I'm going to talk about the loyalty to world fader. <laughs> and, uh, and this is a big fader. It applies to every level of your LARP design, so it can sound a little bit overwhelming. And I'm going to do it in steps. <sighs> also, catch my breath after the Snoopy dance. So loyalty to world, what we're talking about here is the world of the LARP. And when you make a LARP, uh, there is a world the world of the fiction, the things that are true uh, inside the story. And sometimes that world is described by you to your participants, and sometimes it is implied. That is, you don't specifically say. I think maybe when you started to play the family Anderson, it, you, maybe you didn't say, this is set in our world, and all of the things that exist in our world exist in family Anderson. You said, here's a family, and it's contemporary, and this is the living room. And then the players can kind of figure out for themselves that cars exist in this world, and schools exist in this world, and probably dragons don't exist in this world, and also humans very rarely fly. And nobody in the family is going to use magic on each other. That's implied. That's not specifically stated. Now, the world of a LARP can be a number of things. It can be a snapshot of reality. It can be based on, a real, on the real world. It can be based, for instance, on a well-known fiction that creates its own world, like a Marvel superhero. The Marvel universe is a fictional world, for instance, and that's where Spider-Man lives, and Batman doesn't live in that world. Or you can create a completely new world from scratch. And when you do this, or regardless of what it is, when the, you tell the, the participants some things before the LARP, and then some things are established during the LARP, and those things we agree are true, and then the players extrapolate from that. It means if this is true, then this is also true. If this is true, then we can agree that this is true. And that's the thing that enables them to improvise during play. They can talk about the family car, but they also decide that they're not going to talk about the family dragon. In fact, they're not even thinking about the, the fact that the family could, in another world, have a dragon, because that's the way our minds are working. I think uh, in the debrief, I can't even remember in what session, but some speaker have been speaking about the idea of the pattern recognition. It was Magnar yesterday. We like, human brains like consistency. We like to fill in the gaps in the patterns. And that's uh, something that's fantastic, because that's what enables us to LARP together, even when we don't know all the facts. We can just say, here's the living room and the sofa and the table, and then we can go, because people have an idea of what that means, and they can fill in the rest in a consistent, plausible way. This also means, of course, that, that we're very good at this, but we also become a little bit conservative because we want to fill in the things that we can sort of agree on are true in the fiction. So that might actually limit the creativity to some degree. And this is specifically true when it comes to social relationships and norms and what kinds of behaviors and behaviors are available to the characters. So if we don't, if we don't define in the world for certain things, there is a risk that the, the characters start to behave like stereotypes, because stereotypes are a shortcut uh, for, for things that are recognized. OK. So some worlds that you've played in, just to get some idea, the world of Harry Potter, or, or that you've heard about uh, during these days. So College of Wizardry is set in the world of the Harry Potter fiction, or was originally set in the world of Harry Potter. But not at Hogwarts. It was in that world, there would be universities. What would those universities be like? What would it be like if one of those universities was in Poland? And then they took that world and extrapolated uh, another part of that world there. Um, but you've played in some other environments. A surrealistic office in papers last night, or an art exhibition opening in our world, as in New Voices in Art. At one end of this fader, loyalty to world, we have plausibility. And plausibility, plausi something that is plausible, is reasonable or probable. That's what it means. Uh, I think there is another word that we instinctively use here that is called realistic. And realistic is a, is a problematic term. It means many other things also. That's why we say plausible. But if in your mind, if you're thinking realistic, it's, it's totally OK. 
So when we're looking at the world of the LARP and we want to ask ourselves questions, these are the kinds of things that are, that are related to plausibility. What is likely to exist in this fiction? What kinds of institutions would exist in this world? What kinds of situations can happen in this world? What kinds of people exist in this world? And what kinds of actions can they plausibly do? What would they plausibly do? Which is different from what can they plausibly do? Do you, do you see the distinction? What would they do? What can they do? And how would they do the thing that they choose to do in this world? And as you realize now, that when you were looking especially at these last questions, that's a question of the world, but it's also the question of the characters and the culture and the genre. So if you take yourself today as a character, and we say that we're at a LARP that's about a summer school, uh, and it's set in our world, the answers to what you would plausibly do are different depending on the culture that your character comes from. So my character is Finnish, and that means that I am less likely to go out and lie in a hug pile with strangers. And Petter's character is Swedish, and that means that to him, the idea of a hug pile with strangers is a completely plausible thing to do. Now, there are individual Finns who like hug piles, or have been trained to be in hug piles, and then their personal character is, is, enables them to do this thing that isn't there in their, in their culture. And both of those things are plausible. You see what I mean? And if you want a LARP where everybody is in a hug pile, then you might want to write the characters so that they all have a good reason to be in a hug pile, so that it's plausible. Otherwise, the Finnish players will be like, well, my character would never do that and then they don't participate in that scene. Playability, then, is at the other end uh, of, this, uh, of this fader. Uh, it measures the player's ability to engage with the fiction and the themes of the LARP through their character's action and choices. What can I play in this LARP? What is it possible for me to play in this LARP? And then the playability questions are very similar to the plausibility questions, but they're not the same. Who can the players portray in this world? So again, what kinds of characters are available in this fiction, and what kind of roles, remember the distinction between characters and roles, what kind of roles are available in that fiction? So for instance, like in the real world, princesses exist, but at a LARP that was set at a summer school in Lithuania, princess is not a very, like, it's not a very useful role unless the plot is that one of us is secretly the princess of some country. And maybe, maybe you are, I, I don't know. But, but it's not super likely. It's possible, but it's not likely. What kinds of actions, oh yeah, what kinds of qualities or abilities are required for the players to play in this world? And that can have to do with things like physical ability or skills, for instance. So if your LARP requires all the players to um, be able to ride a horse, that actually limits who it is playable for. It could be a very playable LARP for the players who can ride a horse, but not for me. Um, what kinds of actions and choices are possible to the character, and which of those actions and choices are meaningfully present in the LARP? So if I play a construction worker, as it was once one of Eric's examples, that might be a, an interesting identity, but the construction worker actions are not necessarily present in the LARP unless this is a LARP about building. And, and then those things are not playable in, in the fiction on the character level. And which actions are interesting or relevant to our players, and which way to perform them creates the most interesting play. So in fact, in a LARP that's about solving a crime, even if it were possible to build something, the construction workers might feel that they're disconnected from the fiction of the solving the crime. Now, Playability plausibility sounds like a very LARP specific problem, but when you think about it, who else has this problem? Well, everybody who tells stories has this problem. The thing that is most plausible or most realistic isn't always the most interesting. Uh, it's not plausible to say that everybody speaks in funny comments all the time or that everything that happens is a funny situation. But we do have something called sitcoms, situational comedy, where that's kind of a requirement. So in all kinds of storytelling, humans always make a compromise with plausibility. And they say, OK, it's not plausible that everything is funny, but we're just going to agree that in this genre, in this situation, in the context of this story, funny things happen, because that allows us to do something else that we have the goal of making people laugh, for instance. 
So genre is one of the things that actually moves the fader, playability, plausibility. It's true in all media, and of course it's also true in LARP. So a genre is a style or category of story, like romantic comedy or high fantasy or 80s action movie, that, that describes how things work uh, in the world. Um, so let's say that we have that we are out in the night and there are wild animal sounds in the bushes, or that we are home in our house and there's a killer on the loose, and we start to hear some some worrying sounds in the basement. What is the plausible way to act? Well, if, it's, if the story is set in the real world, the plausible way of acting is to not go and investigate. And if you're in a heroic narrative, then the plausible way of acting is to go and, and investigate. Uh, if you're in a horror movie, the most meaningful, playable thing to do is to go and investigate, uh, even though it's not necessarily psychologically plausible for the individual character. And this is great because it means that your player have a great intuitive knowledge of this stuff. So let's think about a military scenario. It would be plausible in a military environment that there's a hierarchy and obedience and you have to ask permission for everything, but not necessarily fun to play. So you can move the fader towards playability by saying, okay, but in this military environment, all the tasks are delegated down and there are no tasks that take longer than an hour to perform. Or maybe we're playing in a Jane Austen world uh, set in the 19th century where it would be plausible that women talk relationships and men hunt foxes and we have dances like once a month and, or once a year and it's an enormously big deal. But to make the, that environment more playable, maybe we say, well, nobody hunts foxes to begin with and everybody talks relationships to their friends and every time we meet, we dance. Or maybe you want to make a LARP about a prison camp, like Prisoner for a Day, and it would be realistic that it was focused on isolation, boredom, waiting, limited interaction, and violence. Well, you actually are going to play it with children, and you only have access to them for a few hours, so it's actually not, plausible. It's not, it's not realistic for you to even have lock them in for several months because their teachers won't allow it. So you say, okay, to make this playable, we're going to shorten the sentence to three hours. And also when you perform tasks, uh, you get to do it in groups. And also we won't actually have violence at this prison. And also we're not gonna actually lock the doors. And that might be an off game thing. They might be in game locked, but those also are there to make the LARP more playable. But what about entirely fictional worlds? When you start from scratch and you can do whatever you want, then what do you do? What is plausible and playable then? So this is a real example from LARP I was, was, I, I was at. I played a witch and they told us this. Witches are hated and feared by everyone. Doing magic is dark and difficult and can only be done with the one witch who is your magical soulmate. And in which culture you only speak or interact with that, that person. Is this plausible? in this fiction, yes, uh, sure, this is plausible. They get to decide what's plausible, and it makes, seems, seems to make sense. Now, that wasn't actually playable, because if you don't get to talk to any characters, it's very difficult. So we changed it, all the witches between us, we decided that we changed this like this. Witches are feared and respected by everyone. So they're afraid of you, but they might still need to talk to you for some reason. Doing magic is dark and difficult, and you can only do it with this one person. And that means that you're tied to this person for life, but you do speak to other people. Like maybe sometimes I would like to hang with some other people instead, but I have to be with this one person. And then that creates an interesting tension that becomes playable in the LARP instead of isolating us from interaction with all the other characters. But this is also plausible. It's not less plausible than the other thing. In the fictional world, you can design the world to be playable and plausible at the same time. And that's what makes this fader a little bit like difficult. So on the character level and the world level and the cultural level, it can be in different positions when you're zooming in and out. You can make a compromise, you can make something less realistic to make it more playable, or you can do a redesign and change something about the world or the LARP or the mechanics or the characters to make it playable and plausible at the same time. At the plausibility end then, the world is internally consistent and predictable and feels realistic, and that's awesome. And the players and designers can lean very heavily on their knowledge of the fiction or on their lived experience to fill in stuff, and that's very useful. But it is difficult to maintain, and it can require a lot of detail. So play papers that some of you played yesterday set in an office, and if we played it in an entirely plausible way, 
maybe everybody would have their own stapler, and that could also be difficult for a, a production perspective. There's also a risk of boring gameplay, and it creates a lot of design restrictions. Uh, like, for instance, you have to be able to lock all the doors, because that would be plausible. At the other end of the fader, this is the playability end. Uh, it allows you to implement all kinds of fun mechanics. And that can take out stuff that's boring, but it also allows you to focus the story on the actions or the interactions that are interesting and relevant to your theme. So instead of doing everything that can happen in a military environment, you only do the things that are relevant for your theme, like violence or oppression or boredom. If, that's, if you want to make a LARP about boredom, then you choose the boring actions, and then that's your point. Uh, Playability, designing for playability can help you challenge real world norms and stereotypes, especially if you operate in a world where you get to decide everything from scratch. Why would you re replicate the sucky things from our world? It can add agency and interesting action to the players and, and to the characters. And it allows you for compromises uh, in production, for instance, like you don't have to require to be allowed to lock students in for several months. Uh, it's a useful compromise. Uh, but it might sometimes mean that some details of the world are illogical, and then you just agree that, okay, but we're just going to, in this world, it's, it, that's just how it is, and we're going to play it like that anyway, uh, and players uh, accept that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>